Okay, hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be showing you how you can set up a new account in the chart of accounts in MyOB. So to do that, we go to the account section of the command center. So if you're in banking, for instance, you'll have to click on the accounts icon here and then accounts list. So the chart of accounts, this is what is used when you see a P&L, a profit and loss, so all your different types of income, all your different types of expenses, and then when you see a balance sheet, you've got your assets, your liabilities, and your equity. And we can see that up the top here, we've got assets, liabilities, equities, so they're all your balance sheet accounts. Then we've got income, cost of sales, which is an expense, expense, other income, other expense. And these are all your P&L accounts. First, let's have a look at what we got in assets here. So if we scroll down, we can see under non-current assets, we've got furniture, office equipment, computers, motor vehicles, and low value pool. Now let's say that we are running a beauty salon and we buy a bit of equipment for the salon, uh, might be sort of laser machines or whatever it may be. So it's not really office equipment, it's not computers, it's not really any of these other non-current asset account types. So we have to create a new account type. So the first thing we have to do is we have to look at where we want it to appear. So you can see here, we've got our header account, non-current assets, and then we've got a header account for furniture, office equipment, and then we've got the normal accounts underneath. So we want to create a new header account. And basically a header account is uh, like a summary. So we have here the header account for, for furniture. And then underneath you've got the furniture at cost and the accumulated depreciation for furniture. And then there will be a subtotal for that header type being furniture. So you'll get, a, you'll get an, an amount here, an amount here, and then you'll get the subtotal under the header account. And the same for all of these. And you also get a subheading for all your non-current assets because all these items here, these header accounts are sitting under the main header account here. So what we're going to do, we're going to set up a new header account for salon equipment and we're going to set it up as 12600 just to stay in uniform with these numbers here. So we'll have a look at furniture here and we can see that the account type is asset. So we're gonna set it up pretty much the same. So we'll go new. It's going to be a header account. The account type is asset. And you can see here your other options. So when you do a header account, you can only select your asset account type by the main account class headings being assets, liabilities, equity, income, expenses, and so on. And I think it was 2600 we wanted to go for. We'll go back and double check that and we're going to say salon equipment. And we'll click OK. Yep, so 2600 is correct. You may also want to uh, slot this in just above the low value pool if you wanted to have your regular um, asset type headers and then have your pool at the bottom, then you could do that. But for the sake of the example, we'll set it up as the next available number in the sequence going 2400, 2500, 2600, etc. So we've got sell on equipment, our asset header account. Now we have to set up the regular accounts that will sit underneath. These are the accounts that you actually code transactions to when you're entering through your spend money, receive money, purchase bills, etc. So we're going to set up an account for 12610 and that's going to be called salon equipment at cost. Let's do that. It's going to be a detail account and we'll just check what account type the others are using. So whenever you're not sure how to do anything in my a really good way to find out how to do something is just to see how a similar account has been set up and then you can follow that. So it's a fixed asset which applies to sell on equipment. So we're going to set up a new detailed account 
coded 12610, account type fixed asset. Let's do that. Fixed asset 2610 at cost. We'll go to details. You can write a description in here as to a bit more information as to what the account is used for. That's optional. Tax code. Now here we have two main choices. We got CAP cap for capital acquisitions with GST 10% and CAF doesn't look like it's set up here. But if you have a capital acquisition that is not GST, then that is usually set up as CAF, a capital acquisition with a 0% rate. But you can call it whatever you want. As far as CAF, it could be whatever makes sense to you. So capital acquisition, classification for a statement of cash flows. We'll just leave that as, as an investing. It's not really applicable to what we're going through in this video. So we'll just leave that as that when we're going to click OK. OK, there it is, 2610. And now we're going to have to set up the accumulated depreciation account, which will be 12620 fixed asset NT tax code. So we'll go new, fixed asset 2620. To detail account, in the details tab, we're going to put tax code NT because GST does not apply to depreciation transactions. And there it is. Now down here, you'll see this up button. Let's click on that and see what happens. Okay, we can see that before the Salon Equipment 12600 code was in alignment with these other fixed asset accounts, but now it's moved over to the left in line with non-current assets. So what that means is when you run a balance sheet, it's gonna be the same. You'll have all your um, office equipment, computers, motor vehicles sort of showing in alignment and then selling equipment will be shoved over to the left in alignment with the header account above, which will look a bit funny. So we don't want that. We want it to be in alignment with the other regular fixed asset accounts. So we're gonna click down and then now you can see it's all in alignment. So that's basically what that does. Whenever something looks a bit funny out of alignment on your balance sheet or your profit and loss, you can come in here and go up, down and move it to the left and to the right accordingly. So if you're not sure what accumulated depreciation is, that's basically when you post a depreciation uh, transaction or journal, you debit the depreciation account, which is uh, a portion of the asset being written off in that particular period and the credit goes to the accumulated depreciation account. And then on the balance sheet, you're going to have the purchase price of the equipment. And then you're going to have a negative entry for the accumulated depreciation. So if the equipment costs $10,000, and then at the end of the year, you processed a depreciation journal for $1,000, you'd have $10,000 at the cost, 1,000 as a negative entry to the accumulated depreciation account and a net balance would be 9,000. So that's how that works. And of course you can enter different kinds of liabilities, equity, your income, different types of sales, and different types of expenses. But that's pretty much it for the video guys. So the main difference here is when you're doing your uh, income and expense accounts, a lot of that will be GST tax coded, not CAP as I used here. CAP is the equivalent of GST, but for capital purchases, not for expense purchases. Now, if you'd like to book in a training session, you can head over to the link in the description, mosey on over to our website, hit us up in the contact form and we can organize a training session for your workplace. Anyway, that's it for the video, guys. I hope you learned something here. If you have any questions, hit us up in the comments section. We'll do what we can to help. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. 
and we'll catch you later.